In this No Man's Sky video, I'm going to show you how to decorate your massive pirate freighter base. Of course, most of this I did in my previous video, and nearly everything in this build you can do. There's only one thing that requires glitching, and that is optional. So a lot of things you're seeing only require rotation and using the hitboxes of other items to place them. So in this case, the pause button could be your best friend. But I am going to show you how to make a lot of interesting things. But more importantly, I'm going to show you the techniques that will allow you to build your own creations and how using different parts and different ways creates different types of items. And for those that don't know, that big blue thing was an expedition reward and you probably can't get it anymore if you don't have it. So let's go up these stairs and see the first thing to look at. I created this big gun, but as you can see, all it is is a collection of parts arranged cleverly. And to do something like this, all it really is, is trial and error. But the first thing I want you to familiarise yourself with is with the menu bar. If you look closely, it gives you all the button shortcuts, including toggle camera. The toggle camera is quite useful as you can go into free build and this will give you a lot more flexibility when building stuff. So if you haven't already, get yourself familiar with all those little sub buttons and sub options. Another important thing to get familiar with is the rotation options. Not only does that give you the freedom to place items whatever way you want, but you'll be surprised what you can do with an item when you rotate it and place it in the wrong way. And when you combine it with other things, you can create some really interesting things. Another great thing to get used to is utilising other items' hitboxes. Sometimes the hitbox gets in your way, sometimes it's to your advantage. So using things like this cabinet, I can actually utilise the top of the hitbox to place an item. As you can see here, that thing is popping in and out, it's missing the hitbox where I want to place it. So if I put a cabinet underneath, not forgetting to centre it, centering does help a lot. I've now created a hit point that I can utilise to place that item. And that quite simply is what this gun is, it's just placing items and seeing how it looks. Let's go all the way up to the top before we move on to the living quarters. Everything up here is a simple case of placing and resizing. The food items on the plate are resized and rotated slightly. And all it requires is a little bit of time going through the items and see what you get. Time to go off to the living quarters and some really interesting stuff in there. I'm going to show you how to make the record player, the speakers in the wall, that lovely TV, the cookers in the kitchen, the sink will be a bit later on, and the fish tank, that's the one I'm going to show you next and that's probably the most difficult thing to do in this video. The fish tank, even I have a high fail rate on this, and if you get frustrated trying to do it, I'd leave it and then come back later, or you can try something else, like not reducing the fish tank, but hiding it in a different way. So the first thing you're going to do, resize a locker, then select the item, hidden triangle and square at the same time on the PlayStation, other platform buttons at the bottom right now, then copying the locker and hitting wire and place at the same time. Remember, this is a really difficult glitch, even I get frustrated with it, so don't worry if you don't get it all the time. Or you can choose just to skip this bit, as there's a lot more fun stuff to do. Now you've got the fish tank in the room, let's resize some units. Place the fish tank at the top of the units. You can use copy, so you can have more than one of them, so you don't have to do that glitch again. Of 
copy a window from another part of your base. And if you think you can get a better result, all you have to do is try it a different way. Like making the unit slightly bigger so it raises slightly up, or adding more units so you can have more fish tanks. For the record player, we're going to place a wall fan, like so. We colour it. Select a vintage plate, rotate it. Get a gas canister, rotate it, reduce it. Select the shovel, reduce it, rotate it. Now as you notice, the hit box from the fan is in the way. So we're going to have to move that out of the way. Then we can position the shovel correctly this time. We can put the wall fan back. Rotated vintage plate. And then create some knobs with a flask. LPs we can simply use the square posters. For the TV, rotate a large monitor station. Trying to get the screen nice and straight. Then select the composter and rotate it round. Then when you scale it up, you've got the perfect wooden cabinet. And if my screen had been slightly straighter, I'd be having a lot less issues right now. Like you right now, get inspiration. I got some of these inspirations from people like Teabags and Shin Banjo. Now the TV's in place, let's create some buttons. And if you need inspiration, the best thing to do is always go and visit someone's base. Of course, you're not going to perfectly recreate what they have, but it will spark inspiration and something new. Then to put something on the screen, all you have to do is certain posters blend in perfectly. To create it quicker, all you need is a small furnace. Put a work top to the side, scale down slightly. Then you use the wall fan to create a hob.
And then when you get rid of the small unit, you can put the furnace back in place and then you've got a hob. But you probably wonder why I put a flat panel on the floor and the auxiliary scope on top. As you'll notice now, I can't get the furnace to go round or inside it. But if I get the camera as low as possible, I can get underneath the scope's hit point and also get the furnace's hit point underneath each other. You'll find you can do this with quite a few items. Create the wooden cabinets that I've got all around everywhere. It's just rotating that composter again and placing it. You can even place it on the wall. The big huge speakers on the wall, that's the storage units. If you don't have them, you're going to have to do some desolate freighters to get them. But as you can see from the end, they've got that lovely circle. It creates perfect speakers. Let's move on to the sleeping quarters. This from here, just a composter, but to create the bunk bed, all I did was make units bigger and use the hip point at the top to raise the beds. Of course in the main bedroom, my room, everything in here is just a variation of what you saw in the living quarters. But in the bathroom you've got that light that's basically reversed to create the toilet. But what I'm going to show you next is how to make that sink. get a worktop, you reduce it slightly. And if you have a unit off the side, you can use it to recolor the sink. So you recolor the unit first, and then when you select the stone trough, it's picked up that color. And then with trial and error, you resize the stone trough, you resize the units until you get it perfectly right. Then select the vintage tap to make the taps. Right, let's head back down to the main foyer. To create the free sanding screens, all you have to do is enlarge a large servers, create a nice straight row. Then use the various rotation options to get it perfectly straight and then carefully move it up and down to get it perfectly lined up.
For the stalls, the flower stall in this case, we're going to use the golden counter as a measure. Increase the hanging lamp either side slightly. Create the golden counters. Use the worktop to create hit points. Then use awning of your choice. and then carefully centre the golden counters when you put them back. Right, let's head to the back of the build to where the coffee machine is. Place two small boxes which are reduced on the table like so. Reduce down the industrial pumps and place them as so. You can delete those boxes, select a small furnace, rotate it and reduce it. Then with a bit of trial and error, you can perfectly line them up. Then finally, select some vintage taps, rotate them and resize them. Now let's go to the secret area and everything in this area has simply been placed. You're probably wondering what I made that throne out of. It's the same item, resized and rotated several times. And it's simply the back of a stone trough. So it's really worth rotating lots of items and inspecting them really closely because you're going to be surprised what you might find. And to create something like the throne, you simply have to rotate and resize. I haven't done that one quite straight, but I'm doing it for demonstration purposes only because I need to show you something. The first thing being, if you wanted to move forward, just place it on top of each other, but carefully try and get behind it to delete the old version. Another thing being, if you want to place something like the Titanic trophy on top of it, the hitbox for the trough is going to be inside it. 
So you can use something like light boxes to create a new hitbox exactly where you want it to be. Now when I move the Titanic trophy up and down, you can see it bouncing off that new hitbox. And when you're done, you can get underneath and get rid of those light boxes. To make the stone room, all I simply did was rotate the stone planters. And treat them like regal bricks and slightly rotated them till I got a nice carved cave. create curtain doors, I use the locker to create a hitbox, switch snap on and off from the opulent tapestry and simply resize them. I've used up all my flaming barrels so imagine that's a flaming barrel, so when I want to make a flaming statue, You'll notice the hitbox is in the way, it's right at the centre of the statue and it's right at the centre of the flaming barrel as well. Now you could raise the flaming barrel up to raise the hit point. And like I showed earlier, you can go underneath, place it correctly at the centre. But in this case, I felt the flame was just better, just slightly off centre. Now how do you put something in the hands of a Gex that doesn't have a hit point in that hand? If you use the hit point at the top of the flag, it will work perfectly. Of course, like most things, you're probably not going to get it straight away, so you're going to have to push the flag slightly further back. And with a bit of a trial and error, you'll get it perfectly inside the grip of the Gek. We want to place wall flags because all these walls are uneven. You can use something like that large stone trough against the wall to create a straight edge to put your wall flag against. The hardest thing here is deleting the surface once you're finished. And as I walk into my final room, which just turns out to be my smuggler's room, I've hoped you found some of these ideas and some of these tips inspiring and useful, but more importantly, hopefully I've shown you some of the techniques that you can utilize to create your own strange objects or bring everyday objects into the game that don't exist in the game at present or possibly in the future. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, hit that like and subscribe button or on the bell thingy. And of course, thank you for watching. See you all later.